Good morning, um, Sunday school class. Thank you all for being here. We have some in the sanctuary as well on Zoom. Um, we have a great lesson on this morning. We're talking about the superiority of wisdom. The superiority of wisdom, amen. Um, and it's coming out of the book of Ecclesiastics, um, the ninth chapter, 13 through 18. Um, our Bible truth is we should not ignore the quiet, thoughtful words of the wise. Amen. Our memory verse is, it says, then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. And that's in Ecclesiastes 9 and 16. Our lesson aim on this morning is, by the end of this lesson, we will discuss the underlying message in the parable of the poor wise man. Trust the superiority of wisdom over, over force and examine our attitudes about listening to the thoughtful words of the wise. And we only have a few scriptures um, this morning but um, we're gonna bring our teacher up. Um, that's none other than Elder Ivory. Let's pray for him as he dive into our lesson on this morning, amen. Amen, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. God, we praise you, we magnify you. And we lift you up because you're worthy to be praised. God, you're worthy of all the praise. You're worthy of all the glory. You're worthy of all the honor. God, we thank you for a brand new day. And this is the day that you have made. And you want us to rejoice and be glad in it. So we thank you for waking us up this morning with the blood running warm in our veins for another Sunday school setting. And God, we ask that you look down upon us in a special way. God, open up your word to our hearts and to our minds that we, we may be able to understand, make it plain and simple that a baby may be able to understand it, Father. And God, if you do it, we'll give you all the glory. And if you do it, we'll give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God, amen. We do give out unto the spirit of Christ on this here morning. God bless you, everyone that's in the sanctuary, as well as everyone that's on uh, line. Uh, <clears throat> we have a great lesson on this here morning, and our lesson topic is the superiority of wisdom. We do give honor to Pastor Simpkins and uh, First Lady Simpkins in their absence, and to the sub Sunday School Superintendent. Amen. The this is lesson six: the superiority of wisdom. The superiority of wisdom. And before we get started uh, with the scriptures, uh, we're going to read them, and uh, I will get some volunteers from inside the classroom, and then we'll go uh, from there. So, uh, Missionary Ivory, if you could get uh, read 13 through 15, uh, Missionary uh, Sister Hunter, Hunter uh, 16 through 18, and we're done. Amen. With the reading of the scriptures, and we'll go from there. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seems great unto me. There was a little city, a few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in a poor man. Now there was found in it a poor man, poor white man, mm -hmm. and he, by his wisdom, delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Sorry, uh, could you read uh, 16 and 17 and then let your husband read 18? We have a lesson. Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of wise men are heard and quiet more than cries of that ruler among the poor. 
18. Amen. We have a lesson read in its entirety. Amen. We have just a few verses. One, two, three, four, five, six verses. And you might think that that's a short uh, lesson, but it's some nuggets in these uh, six verses. And we're going to uh, dive into it and get uh, right into our lesson and try to get what God has uh, given us on this here morning with this superiority, superiority of wisdom. Now, I like to break down the topic uh, just to get started. Uh, uh, superiority, uh, uh, it simply means the quality or a condition of being superior, all right? It means excellent, that word superiority. It means perfection, all right? It means prestige, all right? It means upper hand, that word superi superiority. You gotta help me with that superiority. word. Superiority. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> of, of, of wisdom and then it also means advantage all right advantage. Uh, uh, superintendent what did you get anything for wisdom for wisdom um like the lesson was telling us that um you know it it trumps everything like your strength you mm -hmm. know um like how you um go about doing things or what have you it's important to have wisdom, and we're talking about superiority wisdom. This wisdom trumps like strong men, a strong army, because, well, I don't want to take the lesson, but it talks about like this king that came up against him. Like when, you know, when our back is up against the wall, sometimes it's not in our money, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not in our strength or our might, but superiority wisdom will, you know, bless you know, allow us to get out of our situations as we see here in the lesson this morning, you know, because a lot of times we look for the outward appearance of prestige and all of that. Oh, I'm going to go to him because he looked like, you know, he can help me out. But this was a poor man that they, they you know, after they got what they want. Well, I, I'm going to stop. Okay. That's what they're okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, a wisdom, uh, the quality or state of being wise is knowledge of what is true, is discernment or insight, is wise sayings or uh, teaching. A missionary ivory. Amen. James 3 and 17 said, but the wisdom of this world is from above is first pure, then peaceable, Gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Okay, class, and I know my online class, I don't believe y'all can hear. Okay, okay. I'm just going to, I'm just, we're just breaking down the topic right now, uh, giving definitions on superiority of wisdom, and some of the uh, class members that's on here was uh, breaking it down, and that was a uh, missionary ivory. But I'm gonna go ahead on and go from there. Wisdom, wisdom, is, wisdom, 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 wisdom is feedback. Yes, it's echo. Uh, wisdom is judgment, experience, and understanding. All right, so we're gonna see how in this lesson, how wisdom, you know. Yeah, uh, wisdom is so uh, important. And we're going to see in this lesson uh, how, uh, if you really look uh, down into the lesson, uh, uh, First Lady Simpkin, you know, life is really not fair. Okay, we're going to see how life is not fair, but it's good to have the power of wisdom. And uh, the online uh, class, I'm going to ask that you... Uh, uh, respond by putting your answers in the chat because I'm going to be asking just a few uh, questions as we go. So let's get into the lesson. Uh, we're going to deal with uh, the first uh, three uh, verses and then we'll move from there. And it says th this wisdom. I thought you was asking something. Okay, he has a mic. All right. 
If they want to respond, let them use the mic. Okay, the 13th verse says, this wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city and a few men within it, and there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he was, and he by his wisdom delivered the city, yet no man remembered the same uh, poor man. And uh, when you really look at this lesson, uh, uh, if you really look at the Arthur, uh, we believe that the Arthur, uh, they would say that he was unknown, but we believe uh, that this was King uh, Solomon uh, who uh, wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. All right. Now, the Old Testament uh, books are commonly defined as the wisdom literature, uh, Job, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastic. And some scholars also include Psalms and Songs of Solomon through these are also regarded as poetic literature. These books contain wise saying, common sense, observation on life, principles of good governance and wisdom from the spiritual perspective, all right? The Bible concludes that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, all right? And that's when you, if you, you know, and we know how Solomon, he prayed and he had asked God for wisdom, but I'm letting everyone here know that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you can find that in Proverbs one through seven. In most scriptures, the term wisdom refers to spiritual understanding and obedience. However, in this instance, it is human reason that is the measure. And the first assessment of this observation is that the following parable is a great example of wisdom. All right. Now, I'm just going to uh, work my way uh, through uh, the scriptures here. Uh, through, the, through the Sunday school lesson. Now, verse 13 reveals that Ecclesiastes is written from Solomon's perspective as an older man who has lived long enough to see that life is not always as simple as we would wish. And I, I've said it, and I'm going to say it again. Uh, life is not fair, but favor is fair. And we're going to see uh, as we uh, work our way down this, in the scriptures the key to Ecclesiastes is the phrase under the sun. And he would just simply mean life here on earth. All right. <laughs> life here on earth. All right. This phrase is used uh, 29 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. And this is a reference to the meaning of life on earth. And Ecclesiastes does not raise the question of the afterlife. So let's get into uh, verses uh, uh, 14 and 15. And we talk about this story, the story of a city that is taken captive by a great king. And essentially we are left to our imaginations as to what sort of military equipment was used against this small town with very few men able to defend it. And since cities in those days were surrounded with heavy stone walls, the city could have been besieged in a number of ways, all right? Perhaps a device was created to knock down the walls to gain entrance. And this, we just use our imagination because the story don't really tell us how the king did it, amen. It just say that he had a strong army, all right? And he besieged the city, all right? A portable tower might have been used to climb the wall, we don't know. The only thing we know for sure is that the conquering king who had a, a strong army, all right, who had some power, all right, he took the city, okay? He took the city uh, with his military uh, might. And then again, we can only imagine that this walled city had a variety of defenses, and they could have poured boiling water or boiling oil upon the invaders. 
They didn't do that. They could have hidden behind a shield, uh, like a portable wall, and shot arrows at their enemies. They didn't do that. All right. The exact details are not necessary for us to understand. But this text, because this is a parable, and we will soon see what the preacher uh, point of the story was. But what we do know, and I'm going to get to your questions and answers in a few minutes, minutes, questions in a few minutes. However, is that the city and its citizens were not totally destroyed. And I want you to underline that. They were not totally destroyed because of the advice of this poor but wise man's wisdom. All right. All right. Because of this poor but wise man's wisdom, the city was not destroyed. All right. He must have used a little bit of common sense. All right. He must have to use a little bit of understanding. Amen. He must have to use a little bit of what he know, all right, of his little knowledge for them not to destroy uh, this city. Now, I want to ask the question. I want to ask the question, all right. I want to ask the question, and I'm going to hold that question to it after I read just a few more about this little poor, wise man's uh, wisdom. We do not know uh, what the wise words of the of preacher story were but here is the more story this poor man wise words saved the city all right he did a good deed all right he used wisdom all right good uh, some good happened right but rather than the wise man receiving great honor he was soon forgotten all right i'm going to remind uh, you all that life is not fair all right, it is uh, possible everyone like a story with a happy ending, but this one does not end that way. We all like to see people give honor to those who are wise and bring about good results. We like to hear the talented people receive uh, rewards, even if they happen to come from uh, circumstances of poverty, but we all know that life is not that way life is not fair do we have any comments uh i don't can't see uh in the chat okay if we have any comments if not i'll keep going on there's a question in the chat from elder smith okay it's, and it says why do we openly pray some but not others wow. that's his question why do we openly pray some and not others. Correct. I, I hear I hear a response in the audience said because of their status. She, she's the one. Yeah, she got a mic. Oh, you got a mic? I was saying because of their status. To be honest, they might have been hungry, they might have been poor, 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 the most popular one, you know, the outspoken one. But the soft quiet one that seems to be overlooked. They are really the most powerful. Did y'all hear that? Could you hear that online? Yes, we can hear it. Okay. Because of their status, because of their popular. I have another one. Yes, I would say that people sometimes, because they have a um, quiet, soft-spoken voice and there's a lot of power to their voice there's someone more boisterous and loud that people pay more attention to as opposed to that person that's humble and meek and is not trying to seek the attention then they get overshadowed so people tend to listen to the loudest voice in the room you know because you almost can't help but listen to it and that other person's not getting the opportunity to get in on that so I, I think that's another reason. All right. This is his turn to speaking. Yes, sir. You know, that is so true about status quo. And then my question is to that is that in the church? Right, God, is that in the church, the status quo? People overlooking the other folks. They did it there forever. They're hard work going on. But they're quiet. 
and we can humble friends have a mind go back to a lot of the old saints, the past, the devil, that way, they only turn up. They came up here and poor me no education, praise God, I can't do. I mean, my man just, I don't know where that education comes from. I hate him pass it down to his children, but praise God, he knew exactly what to do with his hands and build and buy and restore. Praise God. So what that poor man? Yes, the poor man has a lot of wisdom. Praise God. I just want to focus on the church. Could you read my chat, uh, Missionary Smothers? Yours? Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Read the read in the chat. I saw oh, some. Oh, people are well in the chat. People are responding that they can't hear well in the sanctuary, so maybe maybe they can come to the front, and we can hear their responses better. Okay. When, when they're when they're responding, if they could come and sound, it has an echo. Okay, we'll we'll okay, we'll we'll definitely do that. But we're gonna uh, move on. Okay with his question? Would uh, L. Smith satisfied with his question? Did he want to ask? Elder you? Smith, are you satisfied with the answer to your question? Did he want to add anything to his question? Okay, so. Is he responding? We go on. All go right. On, go on. Go on. There's no response. Okay. Now, in this story, if this, you know, if this story was a fairy tale, which we know it's not, and even our lives are not a, a fairy tale, it would have a happy ending. And we talk about this poor uh, but wise man. The poor but wise man would be honored by everyone, right? If this was a fairy tale, a statue would be erected in his honor. All right. If this was a, a fairy tale. He might even be elected to a high office, but that didn't happen. Soon his wisdom, all right, that saved the city. Y'all need to really think about that. His wisdom that saved the city, all right, that was something good, you know. And Jesus went around doing good. And he was despised and rejected. Amen. They, they uh, crucified him because he ran around and did good. I just want to let uh, everybody know here, if I don't say nothing else about this, that's keep doing the right thing. Keep doing good. All right. Uh, life is not fair. If, if they don't call your name, if they don't mention you and you doing the right thing, I'm here to let you know, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, that God sees and knows all in heaven is rooting uh, us on in spite of uh, what man uh, says, all right, and we can see here that he didn't get the uh, attention and the response that was due to him, but I want to let you know that God knows and sees uh, behind the scenes, um, behind the scenes of uh, work. Let me, let me just kind of uh, get back into this about this little video poor man, because I'm trying to uh, just build a foundation. I know we got just a few more minutes. But that didn't happen. Soon is wisdom, all right? Now, now y'all got to really look at wisdom. His excellence, his perfection, his prestige, his upper hand, his, his, his advantage, all right, was soon forgotten, all right? And he was forgotten as well. He went back to being a nobody. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right, he went back to being a nobody. That's Zimpkin, he was a hero, then he went back to being a zero. <laughs> All right, <laughs> somebody to a nobody, amen. But but he saved the city and, and whatever he did, you know, with that conquering king and uh, I was uh, 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 just thinking about, you know, this 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 powerful king that, that came in and, and whatever he did, and normally they'll, they'll root out everything that's not on their, their agenda. But whatever he did, he saved the city. And it just don't tell us what he did and, and how he saved the city, but we can use our imagination. He did something powerful that saved the city. All right. Is there any comments? Smothers has her hand up. So I would say that he saved the city. It was saved by him. He was forgotten just like you said, just as quickly as he was noticed, 
just as quickly as he gave and saved the city. That, those people forgot about him right away. But it further on in the lesson after, it says that men quickly forget, but God never forgets. He knows those who belong to him. He knows our names. Our names are written in the book of life. And so we're not doing it for men anyway. We're doing it for God. And, you know, he knows who respects him and his word. So that wise man was real smart because he was he was doing it, yes, to save the city. But he was also being obedient to God because he knew that if he had the answer, the answer had to come from God because it was a very small city and it was a great big giant king. He was very powerful. He had a big army. He probably could have took that city. But guess what? He didn't take the city. And it was only a few people in the city, only a few men. Now, it doesn't tell us what happened, but what we need to know is that the victory was gotten through God, through that wise man being given that information through the Lord. So that that was what touched me because the fear of the Lord, you know, he could have been quiet. He could have said, mm -hmm. oh, that ain't going to work. I better get out the way. He could have said a whole bunch of stuff. But what he did was he obeyed God and the city was saved. So him being forgotten immediately was no big deal to him because it seemed to me he was living for the Lord. Amen. The superiority of wisdom, y'all. God want us to have wisdom. Amen. He want us to use our wisdom. Amen. For the good of our families. He want us to use it for the good of our community. He wanted to use it for the good of our church. Amen. He want us to use our wisdom the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom all right okay um you're, you're doing um, i see you up you here. see me yeah okay. um you're doing a great job um elder ivory um talking about this lesson the superiority of wisdom and i'd like to go back to verse 14 because this was a great king and you know to build bulwarks against it that means that he built that so nobody could, you know, to me in my mind, try to come in and help these people out. And my thing is like, if it's a small city, they knew this man was wise all along. So it's kind of like, you know, until they got desperate enough, I mean, they, they probably overlooked him numerous times and I'm not gonna go, you know, my imagination or whatever, but like, you know, when your backup is up against the wall, you know, you're up to listen to, you know, anybody, you know, and, there's a blessing in quietness, amen? Mm -hmm. We don't have to tell people our plans all the time. Right. We just be quiet, let God work, all and right. let God work it out. Everybody right. who's talking loud is some, sometimes ain't saying nothing. Yes. We can't get on social media. We can't go saying what, what God is doing for us a lot of times, unfortunately, because the enemy can hear, and then people who may be against you can hear the plans of the Lord. So wisdom would say, be quiet and just, you know, move, you know, like just, just move quietly and just, and then the manifestations will come forward. Amen. So sometimes, you know, it's a blessing to be quiet and we don't have to be recognized. As long as God recognized me, uh -huh. it's all, it's all good because it's for the common goal anyway, right? To like not be conquered by the great king that had all this strength and all this power. And it just goes to show us, it's not by might, it's uh -huh. not by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. So like we said before, just because you have this big status quo and you have money, sometimes money can't do it, amen? And we need God's wisdom. And we thank God um, for this lesson about this poor man that nobody, he was despised. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. Somebody help you out and now they turn around and you despise now because you know, you helped them out. And so this lesson comes for our learning for us to adhere to these lessons on the, this morning, amen. Do I see a hand? Yeah, I need you to use the mic and come. Okay, we have a-, a... Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear can sisters hear? Smothers? Yes, we can hear. We can hear, but can she come up a little closer? Okay, uh, just go ahead and I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it. Your, thank you. Go, go ahead. Okay. Remember, this is a parable. All right? This is a parable. And what is a parable? And that's what you're trying to get the moral Uh-huh. Okay. Remember, this is a parable the story. But definition-wise, it said a parable is a statement 
or a comment that conveys a meaning indirectly by the use of comparison. Use the mic. Okay? So to break it all down, um, what is the moral of this story? All right. And here we have, as they say, uh, the poor man, the quiet man. We have to be careful that we don't miss the quiet person. Uh -huh. right. Amen. The usher. All right. The, 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 the greeters. Uh -huh. All right. We have to be careful. And I'm so glad we don't do that here. Amen. But one thing I know about is when you look at this, it was talking about, and I got to sit down and watch what it's saying. It, it, it's common sense, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's common sense. Here we have a, 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 a king is letting us know in his old age with much more wisdom than you have when he was younger. Okay, and then, and then what I like about this, Elder Ivory, is that the wisdom that he used and as as Amen. I believe God gave him the insight. God gave him the wisdom. God gave him the intelligence and in how to be strategic in winning this battle. Amen. Okay. Elder okay. Lambert has his hand up. Okay. Elder Lambert. God bless you, saints. How's everyone doing? Um, I, the, the thing that, that uh, th this story brings to mind for me is that God always has a ram in the bush. He's going to protect his people no matter what it takes. Wisdom is, there's two wisdom. There's two types of wisdom. There's the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. When we follow the wisdom of God, we can tear down mountains. We don't know what God has for us. So that's why it's important no matter who you are, that you're walking in the spirit of the living God. Because yes. you don't know when you're going to be that ram in the bush. This isn't so much a story about that one wise man, but it's telling us how we should be, how we should conduct ourselves, how mm -hmm. we should be in position, how we should honor uh, leadership, how we should honor one another. And don't worry about the praise of man, but worry about the praise of God. And I'm done. Yes. Okay, we, if we get ready to move on to the next uh, few scriptures, but wisdom is better than strength, y'all, all right? Oh, and, and, and with the wisdom of the poor man, it's still better than the brute force of the powerful king. And we can see that, all right? That this king has some power, but this uh, little poor man had wisdom. So the wisdom of the poor man was better than the uh, strength of the king. And in order to this to be true, we need to look at things from an eternal perspective in heaven. Everybody say in heaven. heaven. The poor man, all right, the poor, but the wise man will finally be rewarded. And my mind just kind of goes through the story of Lazarus, all right, the, uh, Lazarus, what they had, the poor beggar and the rich man, Lazarus, all right, and we all know how that story ended. Everybody thought that the rich man uh, would go to heaven. Amen. But the poor man, the beggar, ended up in heaven because of his faith. Amen. It wasn't about his riches, about how uh, prestige he was. All right. The poor man ended up in heaven. And, and the things, if you really read the story, the whole story was changed around. Now, the, uh, Lazarus needed the poor man help. And y'all know the story. He wanted him to take some, dip some water and just put some water on his tongue because he was over in hell <laughs> burning. Okay, we know the story about uh, Lazarus and the rich man. So we're going to move on and we get ready to close uh, to verse 17 and 18. And I'm going to ask Superintendent to read that and I'm going to put it in fifth gear here. And we out. Um, 17, um, 17, read up, just read uh, 16, 17, and 18. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. The words 
of wise men are heard and quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. Y'all hear that? One sinner. All right, one sinner. And before I go to that, let me just say uh, 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 the benefit of wisdom over folly. All right. The benefit of wisdom over uh, foolishness. The, biz, the, the benefit of wisdom over stupidity. A wise uh, mentor, uh, mentor teacher once said that when a classroom of noisy children makes you feel like yelling at them, lower your voice instead. The children will get very quiet as they try to hear what you are saying. All right. This quiet style of administration is advocated in these two verses. This wisdom can also be applied to warring factions of any kind. The gangs in the neighborhood, all right? When they all riled up, you know, don't get riled up with them, you know, get peaceful with them, all right? Amen. The gangs, uh, the faculty of a school, the employees in the office, and even the members of church committees. Are we among those who listen to the agitators or are we willing to listen to quiet words of wisdom and uh, peace, all right? The phrase uh, heard in quiet in verse 17 refers not to manner in which the crowd received uh, the words of wisdom, but to the way that they were delivered. The wise person, is speaking in a gentle but sure voice, all right? Amen. Meanwhile, the ruler among the fools shouts and pushes his way to get attention of the, to get the attention of people. The word fools can mean silly. The word fools can mean stupid or foolish, all right? This verse suggests that not only did the... Uh, ruler over the fools, but that he himself was a fool. And in contrast to the rulers of fools, the truly wise persons give advice in a quiet manner because he or she is counting on wisdom in words rather than a dash and splash. The wise person speaks from a calm spirit. Do I have any comments? All right, verse 18, it says, uh, wisdom that could end wars in our time, if people really follow these words, peace negotiation, negotiators may come with words of wisdom that if heeded could prevent wars while negotiators sit down and listen to both sides and come up with a solution that is agreeable to all sides. All that is needed to stop negotiations is one rebellious uh, person with a quiet mouth. <laughs> um, no, no, that says loud mouth. <laughs> Elder Ivory. Mouth. A, a Elder rebellious... Ivory. Yes. Um, Brother Solomon put something in the chat and he wants it to be read. So I'll read it. Please. Uh, Solomon says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See Proverbs 9 and 10. But how should we fear God? Philip Mellon Chotton, a collaborator of Martin Luther, discussed what it means to fear God by contrasting fear with servile fear. Filial fear is the type of respect and love a child has for a parent, a fear of offending the one they most adore and trust. In contrast, servile fear is the kind of fear that a prisoner has for his jailer or executioner. That was from Brother Solomon. All right, Brother Solomon. Very good. And and One Elder minute. Lambert has his hand up again. Come on, let him speak. Unmute yourself, Elder Lambert. Um, it sounded like Solomon was asking a question. Uh, was he asking a question or just making a statement? I'm thinking so it was if he's asking a question, I want to ask mine. Ask yours. Okay. Uh, did Elder Ivory want to adjust the question? Because I have a question. I don't want to put a question on top of a question. I think he just was commenting. Ask your question, okay. Elder Lambert. Okay. 
what is a quiet spirit? That that kind of caught my attention. What does it mean to have a quiet spirit? A peaceable spirit? He said, what is a quiet spirit? What does it mean to have a quiet spirit? What does it mean to have a quiet spirit? Is there any responses in the chat? There's no one in in the um, room online that okay. has a response. Is someone in the sanctuary? Do anyone in the sanctuary um, could you um, answer that his question? His um, elder Lambert's question was, um, "What does it mean to have a quiet spirit?" Because we're talking about. Um, how they came to this poor man. The parable talks about the poor man. And he's asking, what do it mean to have a quiet uh, spirit? Yes. Well, if, if no one has an answer, I have an example. Go ahead. Our pastor. If anyone has ever dealt with our pastor, you can't he it. has a quiet spirit that's salted with wisdom and meekness, right? And meek doesn't mean soft. Meekness means power under control. Mm -hmm. So that quiet spirit will carry, even though the loudness of the world, the titles, the uh, positioning, the favoritism, a quiet spirit cuts through all of that. Why? Because it's typically salted with wisdom and meekness. All right. Okay. All right. Now, now let me just close. It takes one hot head. All right. <laughs> one hot headed leader to sabotage a peace process. Okay. Uh, one loud mouth uh, uh, to ruin uh, uh, a whole project. Okay. So, so you want to use wisdom, right? Wisdom over foolishness. Okay. Because one person can stop the whole project. One bad decision could mess up your whole career. One bad choice, all right? Mm -hmm. And it could affect you from generations to generations, right? One, I'm talking about foolish decision can mess you up for a lifetime. It will take nothing but the power of God to pull you out of it, amen. One foolish decision. So it's important that we use uh, the superiority of wisdom. Amen. The excellent, the prestige, the upper hand of wisdom. All right. Uh, 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 the, the power of, of, of wisdom in all of our uh, dealings. And we see this uh, poor uh, uh, wise man. He used the wisdom. And in this story, he getting more acknowledged then our strength, our force, and everything that we go to do, all right? The power of wisdom, Amen. all right? Pastor, yeah. you ready? Yes. Yes. Y'all didn't already call my name? Yes. Glory to God. I'm going to sit with you. Is there any questions in the chat? No, sir. I don't see any. All right. All right. God bless everybody today. Um, as usual, as we always say, we probably should stop saying it, but don't stop. Uh, this is a good lesson. Amen. And uh, as we continue to speak and talk about uh, wisdom, uh, properly applied knowledge, God-given direction and guidance appropriately followed. It is important for us to understand and to know, glory to God, that God wants us to understand that uh, we are in the hand of God. We are in the hand of God. And if you read, look at this whole chapter, uh, it is talking about uh, the, this, this very fact. So the, the, uh, the example that we're giving the that uh, talks talks about the poor man and the city really fulfills or straightens out what was talked about prior to that. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that 
uh, I was going to look at, and, and I hear, I heard this all the time. In fact, my father and gospel, Dad McAlee, used to quote it all the time, and he talked talk about time and chance happen to everyone. Glory to God. Uh, and, and he's taught, we, we often quote the race is not given to the, to the swift, verse mm -hmm. number 11. Uh, again, I saw unto the son that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, mm -hmm. neither bread is bread to the wise, nor riches to those of intelligence and understanding, nor favor to men of ability. But time and chance happens or overtakes them all. Mm -hmm. We all, uh, no matter whether you're rich or poor, are going to find yourself in situations uh, where you're going to need to operate in wisdom. You trying to bully folks, a guerrilla folks around, you trying to out talk folks and manipulate people. Glory to God, because you have uh, some education and some skill and the gift of gab, uh, mm -hmm. or because you're good looking and tall, or because you're influential uh, and you've got power. Glory to God. You've got to understand that all of us are in the hand of the law. Can I talk to somebody? Glory to God. And there's going to come a situation with all of your power, all of your skill and ability and influence where all of that's not going to work for you. What you're going to need to use is wisdom. So we have this story uh, where this city, this small town was being besieged by a great king. They had come against him, and all of the strong men, it wasn't a whole lot of men, but whatever was there, those with money, those with influence, did not have the way to deal with this. But this poor man, glory to God, uh, he was poor, but he yet had wisdom, all right? Uh, and so that even though they had put bulwarks or embattlements, uh, more than likely, there were some walls probably uh, put around the city. Uh, so that, that the city had a wall, but there was another wall built by the enemy to starve them out so that they could not receive supplies, nor could anybody leave or go. They were besieged. There were bulwarks, and you know they had those battle engines where they would bring them and they would shoot rocks against strong wall cities to try and break down the walls of the city. Uh, they didn't just, there, there must have been this wall that they had around them uh, must have been a strong wall. Otherwise, the strong city, the strong king would have come in and overtake them easily. Mm -hmm. But I was reminded when I read this that Jesus be a fence all around me. Yeah. I'm just telling you what it came to me. I don't know about anybody else, but it came to me. Jesus yeah. be a fence all around me every day. Glory to God. And they had this wall that protected them until the wise man could come along with whatever he came up with. Mm -hmm. He came up with a plan that saved the city. They did not get overtaken. They did not get uh, thrown in because the wall protected them for the necessary time for them to leave. Now they only had to follow the direction of the wise man, the poor man, the one who was not often listened to. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know how many know sometimes when you get in desperate situations, glory to God, you open yourself up to uh, ideas and concepts you would not have considered even in days gone by. Can I talk to somebody? Yeah. Glory to God. And so it's important to understand that God was trying to let them know that uh, he, everybody was in his hand. And what you needed to do was to follow the direction of God, or in this case, the wise man who uh, represented the wisdom of God. Can I talk to somebody? He represented the wisdom of God. Glory to God. Uh, when sometimes folk want to get out and fight and talk crazy and, you know, let me yell my way into this situation. You know, some, something goes wrong and maybe the PG&E PG &E does do something and does bill you inappropriately. But yelling at them is probably not the best way to get folks to work with you. Mm -hmm. You know, what you want to do is use some wisdom. Talk to them. Get to know them. Let them know that you're concerned about where they are. Let them know that they're wonderful people and people just make mistakes. And I understand that. Glory to God. Rather than going off and I don't know who you think you're talking to. I am. I ain't talking about none of y'all. So don't be getting all upset. Be writing in the chat box. Glory to God. I'm not talking about you. I'm, all right. Anyway. So the bottom line is you got to get to a place where we use wisdom to move things along. And that's what this man did. He used wisdom and he spared the city. But understand, he had to do this. My wife talked about this. 
uh, uh, earlier, but he had to do this not based on whether or not he wanted everybody to call his name and not call this poor man, glory to God, and put his name on a plaque and put it in the middle of the city uh, on, on a statue because he saved the city. That wasn't what it was about. He was saving the city, but God used him to save the city, and so he got his reward from God because people will drop you off. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. People will forget your name. Glory to God. And they will forget who you are. They will forget the hard work you'll sacrifice. Glory to God. We tell folk in the church, listen, you're doing your service for the Lord. And just cause we call uh, some names and forget to call your name, don't get mad and walk away and throw in your hospitality card or your pots and pans card or your usher card. Glory to God. Don't burn your parking lot card. Glory to God. Keep on Praise in the Lord. Because your service is as unto the Lord. And if it's not, whatever you do is going to be in vain anyway. Amen. It's going to be wood, stubble, and hay. Mm -hmm. It's going to burn up. It's going to burn up because people, when, let me stop yelling. Because when people <laughs> get tired of you, the first you can do all the good in the world. Mm -hmm. But mess up one time, see what people remember. Mm. See what people remember. Glory to God. Negative glory to God always shouts louder than the good whispers as it walks. The negative has taps on his heels. Good walks in moccasins. You got to understand that you just got to keep on walking and doing what God told you to do. And eventually God will have a little story, which it might not have your name in it, but it will have what you did. And you notice that this poor man didn't have a name. name. His name wasn't Joshua or Bobby or Robert. Glory to God. His name wasn't Jamal or Lamar. None of that. Glory to God. He didn't have none of those names. But he'll be remembered. Because they said I'm too loud. He'll be remembered because, oh, I saw you, Brother Roger. Go ahead and act like you didn't say that. That poor man. <laughs> that poor man. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, and you need to put it in the chat box, the chat box I must work the works of him that sent me. Yeah. I know that's a lot to put in there, but you got to remember that. I must work the works of him that sent me. Yes. I got to do what God told me to do. Yes, Because he's the one that has the reward that's going to be most beneficial to my life. Yes, Glory to God. He has the reward. And so saints of God, you're going to have some difficulty. I know it must have hurt. Come on, he, this man was human. Mm -hmm. I know it must have hurt to be Glory to God to have uh, given advice that saved the city and then to be forgotten a day later. Yes, sir. Glory to God. But he did it for the Lord and the Lord did not forget his works. He wrote about it so you can remember mm -hmm. so that you would know mm -hmm. that you do whatever you do for the Lord. All right. Uh, and so it would not have behooved this man to go around and then start telling everybody, you know, I saved y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, if it wasn't for me, y'all owe me. Y'all yeah. should get me a big house and some money. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have worked out well for him. His wisdom, glory to God, was the ability to do what was required of him and not have to make a whole lot of noise about it. Yes. All right. It is important for us to understand God lets us know. And uh, I want to go back. If I might, glory to God, to this particular scripture. Y'all forgive me if I don't stay exactly in the 13 through 18. All right, because this whole chapter mm -hmm. is worth mm -hmm. going back to mm -hmm. look at and read and grab how you got to the third to this particular portion. Yes. All right. They 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 kind of picked it out and they went with that. But there's more to this chapter that's so so very, very beneficial. Glory to God. But let me go back because the writer says. And again, I saw under the sun, verse number 11, that the race is not to the swift, mm -hmm. yeah. nor the battle to the strong. There was a strong city king that came against them. Mm -hmm. 
He said, but the battle is not to the strong and neither is bread to the wise nor riches to those of intelligence mm -hmm. or understanding or is understanding nor favor to men of ability. I'm reading out of the Amplified Version, y'all. But time and chance overtake them all. Time and chance happen to them all. <clears throat> Amen. You're going to have some days, uh, even when you do good, even when you live hope, mm -hmm. you're going to have some days when trouble come your way. Even when you bless folks in the church, <laughs> even when you bless folks in the church, you're going to have some opposition from the same folks you blessed. Soon as soon, soon as you start, stop handing out five dollar bills, mm. folk going to forget your name. Mm. But you got to remember why you were giving them out in the first place. And if you were giving them out for the wrong reasons, it's not going to benefit you. Right. All right. You got to know that your service is as unto the law. Yes. Can I talk to somebody? Yes, Glory to God. We lose sight of that. And I understand we're human. We lose sight of that in the church. You know, I, I was a blessing to them. I was here and I drove them around. I, I didn't ask for no gas and, I, you know, I was nice to them. I brought food to their house. And glory to God, they called me all late hours of the night when they needed me. And glory to God, now they forgot how my, well, they forgot my last name. <laughs> Listen, why were you doing it? Mm -hmm. Were you doing it to gain the favor of men? Or were you doing it as unto the Lord? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know I said that and I repeated it and I probably repeat it one more time yes, as I'm close. Jesus. Because I want you to get this, folks. Stop getting mad with people in the church. When, when y'all have a season of relationship and the season comes to a close. Or the window begins to close just a bit. Not that it's over, but it just ain't as wide as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at that thing properly, don't worry. You'll keep your eyes open for another season with something else. That's a greater blessing. Mm -hmm. God don't never close a door without opening a better one. Hallelujah. I know I'm through. Mm. So let me just share with everybody. <laughs> Time and chance happen to all of us. Yes. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with fire, got a matter run on, see what the end's going to be. Time and chance happen, good and bad, ups and downs, day and night, storm and rain, yes. sunshine. And yes. rain. Oh God, it happens to all of us. We are living li a life of seasons. Yes, Lord. So prepare to be victorious, whatever the season. Yes. God bless you. This day. Thank you for being a part of the Sunday school. Thank you to the Sunday school superintendent, sister superintendent, to the teacher today. We praise God for all of you. All. Let me encourage you to get your best seed together, as I do every week, and you have responded so wonderfully. Glory to God. Would you get your best seed together? Everybody that would get $10, $15. If you can't get it, just get the best you can, whether that's five or three. Glory to God. If it's one, if it's change. Uh, well, you can't give change on on cash app, but glory to God, whatever you can do. Amen. And remember this, just so you know, I want you to please do, please sow, please sow, please sow. But remember, whatever you sow, if you do it on cash app, PayPal, though, they're going to take 3% out of that. They're going to take 3%. They charge 3% for that money. Unless you're going to leave that money in there for a while, they, they charge 3%, 2.75%. So if you give $10, it's really $7.25 or 75 cents or whatever. It's never, it, they take 3% out, approximately 3%. So whatever you're giving, understand that there's a portion that this, 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 this company is going to take for their services. So I want to encourage you all, give the best you can get. And if the Lord speak to you, Glory to God, just add another, you know, $3 to it or $5 or $10 just to cover the cost. Give what you're going to give. We're appreciative of whatever you give. I just thought I'd let you know. Amen.
Glory to God. So bless every one of you who are sowing today. Thank you very, very, very much. And uh, we're looking forward to having church. I'm going to come back with part two of uh, uh, Make Room. This is your abundant season. I'm going to talk about it today. Part two. Glory to God. Make Room. This is your abundant season. God bless all of you. Amen. And I'm going to put you back into the hands of, oh, wait, before you come, is there any questions or comments or concerns? Glory to God from anybody. I want to make sure that we uh, didn't stir up something that we can't put to rest. All right, come on, we receive our superintendent. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Amen. We do, we do thank you, praise God. Let's say amen for our teachers. Amen. amen. We thank God for our pastor um, reviewing as he always does. Um, we thank the participants of Sunday School and I also thank my assistant Deaconess Mothers who's always there. He's always faithful, amen. So at this time, we're gonna stand and be dismissed. Our motto. 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 Motto.